Trust is facing accusations that it tried to cover up the full extent of its death rate. The government's already reviewing the hospital over its mortality figures, following the public inquiry into the scandal of the Mid-Staffordshire Trust. Now the BBC has uncovered apparent discrepancies in the way some deaths were recorded. Julian Sturdy has this exclusive report. Another grieving family wanting answers from Basildon Hospital. Pamela Chappell died last month after a brain hemorrhage. Her children complain of misdiagnosis, delayed specialist treatment and out-of-date drugs. I just don't believe that she'll be received the level of care that she could have received that evening. I think they, there were opportunities to try and make that situation much better, shall we say. And why did you then feel that you wanted to set up an action group? Because there's strength in numbers, quite frankly, and it, it keeps going on. And it's, I'm not the only person that suffered from this. At one point, I did kind of think, oh, well, you know, people die. And not everyone can be saved. But I'm hearing a lot of stories where people have had incidents where more could have been done. The hospital's still investigating, but with such a poor reputation for mortality, we wanted to know if past clinical mistakes had been rectified. Death rates are recorded and hospitals judged on patient survival under the knife. If it's an incurable or palliative care death, it doesn't harm its reputation. This professor is a world authority on hospital mortality. Ten times he says he issued mortality warnings to Basildon. He's concerned about its record. All of a sudden, the palliative care death went up to 37%. Is that right for a normal general hospital? No, no. I mean, you'd, I mean, to make that change, you'd have to be more or less change overnight to a, a terminal care, palliative care hospice. Do you think the public of Basildon have been misled about the safety of their hospital? Then? Well, I think that is misleading, yes. If it doesn't involve an actual reduction in mortality, but just to change the number, it's pointless. You never save any lives by recoding. We save lives by looking at the quality of care and improving the care. And he's not the only one expressing concern. Julie Bailey founded Cure the NHS after the death of her mother. Her campaign led to the Mid-Staff's public inquiry, an inquiry which heard similarities between the death rates and apparent improvement at the two hospitals. But it just sounds so suspicious to us because it's almost identical to what has been going on at Mid-Staff's. That was, came out at the public inquiry. Is this something that's going on all over the NHS with failing hospitals? They're trying to hide the harm that they're causing patients by altering the coding and trying to cover it all up. I think that this is an issue um, that relates back a, a number of years for which I don't have complete knowledge. Um, I, in fact, I have very uh, little knowledge about the decisions that were made um, in that time. What I can say now is that absolutely there is no massaging of figures and absolutely any improvements in mortality in this trust which we're seeking to do will be because of better clinical care. The Audit Commission found many clinical coding errors at Basildon and in the last two years recorded palliative deaths have reduced but mortality and unexpected death rates are higher again hence a government review. We've discovered in the last four years, 200 families have made litigation claims and the Trust has paid out more than £20 million in compensation. Last October, a 10-year-old girl died. Her life-saving drugs were out of date. Another baby survived morphine overdoses. We can reveal an external review has found understaffing, infection concerns, dysfunctional relationships among consultants, a junior doctor wrongly allowed to give anaesthetic. Pediatrics has now been given a major shake-up of staff. Julian Sturdy, BBC London News, Basildon. Police have named the mother and child who died.